Good afternoon. My name is Samuel Haralu, and I'm a senior at Kamsley University. And um, today, um, I'm I'll be presenting to you about um, an article called um, "The Investigation of a Simple and Cheap Source of a Natural Indicator for Acid-Base Titrations um, and the Effects of System Conditions on Natural Indicators." Um, uh, th this is a presentation for my chemistry seminar cl class, and um, Um, before we get, get into what the actual article says and what, um, what it experimented on, um, uh, just a small, a small introduction to acid-based titrations. Um, we've done acid-based titrations in my duration here in Campbellsville University. I've, um, I've, I've had the privilege to attend uh, many labs, uh, Gen Chem, Organic Chem, um, and most recently Analytical Chemistry, and all of those courses require some form of um, what they term it titrations and um, that's usually used to detect like the amount of basic or acidic substance in a solution and um, uh, the names given like the analyte is the solution with a non molarity and the reagent is the solution with the non molarity and um, it's just been a very useful way to, just to um, uh, just to quantify or just uh, to be able to analyze what how, what percentage or what amount of um, acidic or basic substance is actually in there in the solution? Um, furthermore, um, we need like for for us to know when the reaction has ended, we need a, a sort of an indicator. Indicator is um, something which used to detect the end point, or um, also known as the equivalence point, and. Um, uh, it often occurs that uh, we need indicators which have um, a s strong change of property. Uh, th that's a characteristic of them. Like they, um, when you put in an indicator, it, when the reaction has ended or we've reached um, the equivalence point, that's when the indicator is expected to change color. It often happens that sometimes a reaction can have two endpoints and. Um, and for that, uh, there are certain avenues that can uh, make the reaction possible and still is possible for us to um, determine what amount, of, uh, what amount of acidic or basic substance is, in, uh, is present in the solution. So um, furthermore, yeah, like I was mentioning, um, a property of um, a good indicator is um, just having a physical property that changes um, readily uh, changes uh, rapidly and is a uh, very detectable in nature and um, so the the ones that we the indicators that we usually use in class are synthetic indicators um, such as phenolphthalein uh, methyl red methyl orange and um, those fairly they, those serve their purpose and um, those are very good examples of indicators however there are also indicators that are naturally occurring and in the article itself, um, it has they, they have given examples. The the people doing the authors of this particular article have given other examples of other authors um, actually uh, having success with natural indicators uh, such as bougainvillea, hibiscus, um, pride of Barbados, etc. Um, but for today's article, for this particular article, the natural indicator um, is an extract. Um, is an extract from a certain type of leaf that is found it's called waki leaves are found in uh, found in Africa more specifically Ghana and um, it's just uh, it's a name for guinea corn and um, it's sort of like a staple food in uh, certain places in Africa it says here in semi arid topics and um, some of its uses are um, is very good. Like it's used as a source of food, obviously, but furthermore, it's also used as um, uh, a catalyst for dyeing. Like it's it's used to dye, say hats, um, wallets, and etc. And so you can see, like the plant itself is in high demand, and um, it's it's being used quite extensively for different purposes. The most recent, um, as as of this presentation um, is uh, would be like that we could potentially use 
um, these wokey leaves as uh, the extract that comes out of these wokey leaves as um, a natural indicator for uh, for acid based titrations and that's what the experiment does um, um, like the the extra uh, usually what happens with um, the indicator properties that exist um, in these walkie leaves are um, I suspect would be um, having total um, flavonoids and um, and uh, also uh, condensed tannin so th th those two uh, those two components uh, as, as I was reading throughout the article are, um, are, are, are most probably what would cause these um, these acid-based titrations to actually occur uh, as an indicator for the acid-based titrations. Um, so um, potentially we would use this as a natural indicator for acid-based titrations and uh, the, the author did so um, by s subjecting them to um, certain amounts of like different types of acid-based reactions say um, strong acid versus um, weak base, strong acid versus strong base, weak base versus strong acid and so on and so forth and um, in that way these are some of the um, some of the materials used in the actual experiment um, HPLC, um, ethanol, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, acidic acid, just, just the basic um, and, and some syn synthetic indicators like um, methyl red, phenolphthalein, etc. And um, and these two effects were compared, compared uh, in the sense like uh, say the pH range, uh, say for example the titrant uh, reaching the equivalence point, those values, and etc. And um, for the to prepare the actual sample, um, the author just bought the leaves at the local African market and sieved them into an amber bottle, and it prepared it with various um, various techniques and processes given in the article itself. And um, one characteristic to be noted, which uh, was important to know, is um, when you put this particular extract from the wokey leaves into um, the acid it turns yellow and then um, when reaching equivalence point it turns pink so um, here's a picture um, here's a to show you an example um, of what what the color actually looks like is is here right here um, if you look at it carefully you can see um, when the wokey leaves extract was placed into the acid it turned yellowish in color and after reaching the end point uh, the, or the equivalence point it turns pink um, furthermore the, the author gives us, um, this is the actual paper itself, and over here it gives us tables about um, on how the equivalence point compared to actual, um, the, the synthetic um, indicators, and um, the results were fairly similar, in the, and he, he didn't do it just with the walk you leaves. He also did it with the natural, uh, the synthetic indicators, and then look at the uh, their pH ranges. Looked at um, how much titrant is needed, and um, it just just a way to compare. So if you look at the table itself, you'll see that um, for th this is the physical and chemical parameters of the indicators. So say like yellow to light pink, and uh, also keep in mind the pH range and the mean volume in um, how much base was used to react and how, how like how much um, what number what number of milliliters was it was used to actually reach the equivalence point and um, there was another table with a comparison which is um, very informational and gives us um, the necessary information um, in order for us to uh, make our conclusion but um, 
furthermore, the results, um, as um, stated earlier, the indicator works as well as synthetic indicators. I mean, th th there were some, some where the equivalence point um, or the the titration values were slightly different and uh, more towards w when you compared methyl red and walkie leaves. But at the same time, um, the methyl red wasn't as similar to say, for example, methyl orange or phenolphthalein. And um, this just uh, brings into question that uh, the indi indicator, the natural indicator actually works. But um, more importantly, it's important to know that there might be, have been some uh, physical error, human error, um, error in judgment, which we always, um, which we always um, encounter. And um, overall, um, overall, what uh, what we can conclude for this from this is that um, the whole point of him making this uh, writing this article was the fact that um, synthetic indicators can sometimes be toxic to humans and also be harmful to the environment. But more importantly, um, it's not always readily available, and it's not very not very attainable and it's definitely not cheap either however if we're able to find um, find an, an alternative source as a natural indicator um, as say for example uh, there are so many natural indicators that the author has mentioned but his highlight was walkie leaves are very, very simple to attain very easy to extract and um, the process is fairly simple and is readily available, is very cheap, is eco-friendly, user-friendly, and um, easily available. So um, here's, a, here's a picture of the walkie leaves that I have with me. I don't know whether you could see it properly in this piece of paper, but um, it just it looked like the color is not actually gray. It's actually supposed to be green. But if you, if you look at it, just a simple plant found in the environment, um, which could be, help us in acid-based titrations um this just open oh, like for, like just a little bit more testing and maybe a little bit more conditioning and i think um the the use of natural indicators could take over um at least for acid-based titration it could take over the use of synthetic indicators and in some way or form we were able to uh, we'll be able we'll have access to a cheaper more reliable um an easier source of indicators for acid-base titrations. That's all for the presentation. Thank you.